Now in this section of upper limb, I am going to describe ulnar nerve. So it is again one of the most important nerve often asked as a theory examination question also asked in the ulnar nerve question in the viva examination. So I will describe the ulnar nerve under following subheadings. Firstly the origin of ulnar nerve, then the root value of ulnar nerve and thereafter the course and the branches of ulnar nerve. So ulnar nerve is a very important nerve of the upper limb and all its important aspect will be detailed here. So starting with the origin, ulnar nerve is a branch of medial cord of brachial plexus. So it originates in the axillary region and it is a branch of medial cord of brachial plexus. Ulnar nerve has got a root value ventral rami of C8 and T1. So we have got the root value of the medial cord as C8 and T1. So ulnar nerve also has a root value of C8 and T1, ventral rami of C8 and T1. So just beside that you should write in bracket about C7 also. I will give you the reason why. Because generally it is just C8 and T1 but ulnar nerve takes fibers of C7 also and that fibers is going to supply flexor carpi annularis. So the root value of ulnar nerve is ventral rami of C8 and T1 and in bracket write down C7 also. Why C7? Because it takes fibers from C7 and that part of ulnar nerve is going to supply flexor carpi annularis. So this is the root value of ulnar nerve. Now coming to the course of ulnar nerve. Ulnar nerve as it originates from the medial cord of brachial plexus as in the axilla Thereafter, it will pass downward, passing medial to the third part of axillary artery. So the exact location of ulnar nerve, when we are describing the ulnar nerve in the axillary region, ulnar nerve is sandwiched between or lying between artery and vein. It is lying between the third part of axillary artery and vein. So it is the nerve which is lying medial to the third part of axillary artery which is the location in the axillary region. Thereafter ulnar nerve comes in the arm. So this ulnar nerve will traverse down comes in the arm area and here it lies in medial to the brachial artery till the level we know that axillary artery changes its name lower border of teres major into brachial artery. So ulnar nerve is lying medial to brachial artery. What happens in the middle part of the humerus to be exact location that is the insertion of coracobrachialis muscle this ulnar nerve is changing its direction from the anterior aspect of the arm it is going on to the posterior aspect it will pierce the medial intermuscular septum and after piercing the medial intermuscular septum ulnar nerve lies posteriorly in the arm it will descend down and Ultimately, it will reach to medial epicondyle on the posterior aspect of the humerus. You must have seen that the humerus has got two condyles. One is the medial epicondyle and other is the lateral epicondyle. So ulnar nerve straight down when it reaches the posterior aspect of the arm at the level of insertion of coracobrachialis muscle inserting the medial intermuscular septum it will trace down towards the medial aspect of or medial epicondyle of the humerus at this level it is lying in a groove which groove lying on the medial epicondyle posteriorly this groove is covered by a fascia forming it a tunnel that tunnel is called as cubital tunnel so the location of ulnar nerve behind the medial epicondyle of the humerus is called as the cubital tunnel this is the location of ulnar nerve which is lying on the posterior aspect. So this ulnar nerve has traversed the whole of the posterior lower part of the arm. Thereafter the ulnar nerve has to reach on the front of the forearm. It will come on the front of the forearm between two heads of flexor carpi and laris. So it reaches the forearm, traverses in approaches the up, um, anterior aspect of the forearm, traverses means passes between the two heads of flexor carpi and laris. Okay. Now this ulnar nerve very easy to remember very good ulnar nerve why i will tell you because it is not giving branch to any of the muscles in the arm and axillary region so ulnar nerve is not giving or supplying any muscle in the arm and axilla this point you have to mention when it reaches the forearm, it is giving nerve supply to flexor carpi annularis and medial half of flexor digitorum profundus only two muscle this ulnar nerve is supplying in the case of forearm all the rest muscle as we have discussed it was supplied by the medial nerve so only two muscle one is flexor carpi annularis and other is medial half of flexor digitorum profundus which is supplied by ulnar nerve now thereafter ulnar nerve traverses downward 
passing medially on the forearm and it will give two branches one is the palmar cutaneous branch this palmar cutaneous branch will pass downward passing front of the flexor retinaculum and superficial to flexor retinaculum and it will supply skin on the medial aspect of the palm that is skin on the hypothenar eminences or skin on the medial aspect of the palm now it also give a dorsal cutaneous branch so how many cutaneous branches given by the Allah now one is palmar cutaneous branch other is dorsal cutaneous branch the dorsal cutaneous branch of the allar nerve will go on the posterior aspect of the hand and it will supply one and half of the dorsal aspect of the hand so this whole area means one and half of the dorsal aspect of the hand and also one and half of the fingers so this whole fingers along with the snail bud whole one and half area dorsally is supplied by which branch of ulnar nerve dorsal cutaneous branch of ulnar nerve okay so this was about the ulnar nerve now the main trunk of the ulnar nerve okay don't forget that what i was discussing about the cutaneous the palmar and dorsal cutaneous branch this is passing superficial to flexor retinaculum and also the main nerve is passing downward superficial to flexor retinaculum this is very important you should just note down this point that ulnar nerve is not passing deep to flexor retinaculum which nerve is passing deep to flexor retinaculum median nerve so which nerve is going to be compressed median nerve so carpal tunnel syndrome is related to which nerve median nerve this ulnar nerve is very lucky not getting compressed by it passing superficial to flexor retinaculum don't worry other site is there to compress ulnar nerve okay so there are always some other people or some other hurdles will come in the life so same as the ulnar nerve escape the flexor retinaculum passing superficially the other hurdles which the ulnar nerve has to surpass are following thereafter what happens the ulnar nerve is moving superficial to flexor retinaculum it will divide into two branches one is the superficial another is the deep the superficial branch is going means the main ulnar nerve superficially it is going passing superficial to flexor retinaculum here it is covered by one ligament that ligament is called as volar carpal ligament actually this volar carpal ligament is extension of flexor retinaculum itself so this part of ulnar nerve which is passing superficial to flexor retinaculum which is uh, lying under volar carpal ligament is going to supply one superficial muscle lying in the medial aspect of arm that name of the muscle is palmaris brevis so it is supplying palmaris brevis and also the skin on the medial aspect of this region so this is the region where the palmaris brevis muscle will lie okay now this palmaris brevis muscle is a muscle which is inserting into the skin of medial aspect of the hand so this palmaris brevis muscle is an example of paniculus carnosus okay these are very important questions sometimes the examiner will have some of the question from general anatomy also they are asking the, about upper limb examination but just the name of this palmaris brevis muscle comes and the examiner has got a question in his or her mind that tell me which type of muscle is it so the palmaris brevis muscle is inserting into the skin and those muscle which is inserting into the skin which is lying superficially are example of paniculus carnosus muscle so the superficial branch of the superficial terminal branch of ulnar nerve will supply the skin a area over the medial aspect of palmaris brevis and will also supply the palmaris brevis muscle now coming to the deeper aspect so deep terminal branch of ulnar nerve the deep terminal branch of ulnar nerve will pass deep to one ligament that is called it means it will pass just lateral to the pisiform carpal bone okay it is passing lateral to the pisiform carpal bone and it is covered by one ligament which will pass deep to pisohamet ligament so where it is passing deep to pisohamet ligament and it will supply the muscles of hypothenar eminences so where the thenar eminences is supplied by median nerve and the muscles of hypothenar is supplied by ulnar nerve so this is the hypothenar region okay so this hypothenar region has got abductor digiti minimi flexor digiti minimi opponens digiti minimi so the deeper terminal branch of ulnar nerve is going to supply hypothenar muscle also going to supply third and fourth lumbrical muscle also going to supply all the interossei muscle how many interossei muscles we have got 
we have got palmar interosei muscles we have got dorsal interosei muscles so we have got four palmar interosei muscles we have got four dorsal interosei muscles so all together eight interosei muscles two lumbrical muscles which lumbrical third and fourth the hypothenar muscle three hypothenar muscle one superficial muscle which was supplied by the superficial terminal branch of ulnar nerve and the deep branch of ulnar nerve will end by supplying adductor pollicis so the name of this muscle is concerned with pollicis as you know this pollicis means thumb but this adductor pollicis muscle is the muscle where our ulnar nerve ends so this muscle is also called as graveyard of ulnar nerve okay so graveyard of ulnar nerve is the muscle where our ulnar nerve is ending so that is adductor pollicis so we have seen in short that ulnar nerve is supplying just two muscles in the forearm okay flexor carpi ulnaris and medial half of flexor digitorum profundus but so many muscles in the hand is supplied by ulnar nerve okay so in short we can say that all the important muscles of the hand region means major muscles of the hand region is supplied by ulnar nerve so this is all about the branches and the course of our dear ulnar nerve okay so if you want the summary so just once more the summary about it ulnar nerve originates from medial cord of brachial plexus root value c8 t1 also takes fibers from c7 which supply flexor carpi ulnaris ulnar nerve is lying medial to third part of axillary artery in the axilla thereafter it is traversing between axillary artery and that of axillary vein going down till the level of upper aspect of the arm till the level of that uh, teres major muscle then it pierces in the middle aspect of the arm at the level of coracobrachialis traverse goes backward piercing the medial intermuscular septum lies on the posterior aspect of lower aspect of the arm then goes descend down till the aspect of means it is descending down on the posterior aspect of there is a groove on medial epicondyle so it is descending on medial epicondyle okay covered by a fascia forming a cubital tunnel thereafter comes anterior aspect of the forearm between the two heads of flexor carpi ulnaris supply only two muscles in the forearm flexor carpi ulnaris and that of medial part of flexor digitorum profundus so the what it gives so many branches in the hand so it gives two cutaneous branches firstly the palmar and the second one lower down is the dorsal cutaneous branches okay the palmar cutaneous branch will supply skin on the medial aspect of the palm the dorsal cutaneous branch of ulnar nerve will supply dorsum one and half of the hand and one and half of the fingers including the nail buds okay now thereafter ulnar nerve the main ulnar nerve is traversing downward going superficial to flexor retinaculum escaping the compression at this level but have compression below volar carpal ligament and also can be compressed below pisohamate ligament giving two branches superficial and deep terminal branch superficial terminal branch is supplying palmaris brevis muscle which is an example of panniculus carnosus muscle and this deep terminal branch of ulnar nerve is supplying all the muscles of hypothenar eminences that is abductor digiti minimi flexor digiti minimi opponens digiti it also supplies adductor pollicis it also supplies all the eight interosei muscle four palmar interosei muscle and four dorsal interosei muscle and it supplies third and fourth lumbrical muscle so this is all about the ulnar nerve now after completing the course branches origin root value let's discuss the applied aspect of ulnar nerve now ulnar nerve applied aspect are following it causes claw hand okay it can it can be compressed at various level it can be compressed behind the medial epicondyle it can be compressed below pisohamate ligament it can be compressed below volar carpal ligaments now in the forearm ulnar nerve is just going to supply the medial half of flexor digitorum profundus so this claw hand this is called as the claw hand so there will be complete claw hand only when our ulnar nerve is compressed or injury of ulnar nerve occurs along with the median nerve okay the other important aspect of ulnar nerve is that ulnar nerve is also called as a funny nerve okay how i will tell you because it it is passing so this is the medial epicondyle okay this part which you are seeing this is the medial epicondyle lower end of the humerus this is the lateral epicondyle so just behind the medial epicondyle sometimes our ulnar nerve gets stimulated because it is lying somewhat superficial in this region so if we are stuck somewhere or there is some 
construction means some obstruction to it or if it is sensitized at that reason there will be tangling sensation we will feel at uh, at a glance and that is called as that tangling sensation filled by the compression of ulnar nerve behind the medial epicondyle so it is called as funny nerve okay now the other important aspect is that this ulnar nerve is supplying all small muscles of the hand major small muscles means in the hand we have got small muscle in comparison to forearm forearm has got bigger muscles so that bigger muscles which are doing the larger work is supplied by medial nerve but our ulnar nerve is doing very critical work the musician uses this all small muscles okay so this small muscles of the hand is supplied by ulnar nerve and it is used by musician when they are playing the instrument so it is also called as musician nerve in hand all the muscles are supplied by ulnar nerve except thinar muscles that is abductor pollicis brevis opponens pollicis and flexor pollicis brevis and also the first and second lumbricals so except this five muscles all the muscles are supplied by ulnar nerve to be more precise actually the flexor pollicis brevis the uh, the part of flexor pollicis brevis is also supplied by the deeper branch of ulnar nerve so flexor pollicis brevis becomes an example of which type of nerve hybrid nerve so this was all about the ulnar nerve thereafter what other things occurs in ulnar nerve there is a test okay that is called as from and signs and what you will see generally if the patient if the patient comes of ulnar nerve injury and the doctor or the physician gives him or her a piece of paper and tell him to hold that piece of the paper so normally we will hold the piece of paper like this okay our thumb is straight and we are holding the piece of paper between the thumb and this index finger like this so when the doctor or the physician wants to pull this piece of paper so it should remain straight but in case of ulnar nerve injury or in case of paralysis of adductor pollicis what will happen they will just flex their thumb like this okay when the paper is pulled out this will not remain straight the thumb is just flexed as shown in the diagram in the background you can see the diagram also and this is because their adductor pollicis is not working but the action is taken over by flexor pollicis brevis so this is uh, the foreman sign which is positive in case of ulnar nerve there is partial claw hand that partial claw hand is because of only medial one and half of the finger is involved complete claw hand occurs if both median and ulnar nerve is injured this ulnar nerve is called as musician nerve it is also called as the funny nerve or funny bone related to the medial aspect of the lower end of medial epicondyle so lower aspect of the humerus is also called as the funny bone so because of this region tingling sensation of ulnar nerve on getting stimulated humerus is also called as funny bone so this was detail about the ulnar nerve one more thing just we have discussed all the major nerves in our upper limb section the three major nerves often comes in examination radial nerve ulnar nerve and that of median nerve so you should always remember and sometimes it is a very common question asked in the viva about the nerves generally when you have discussed when we have discussed the nerves we have seen like for example ulnar nerve is passing between two heads of flexor carpi ulnaris median nerve is passing between two heads of pronator teres muscle radial nerve is passing between the two parts of supinator muscle so this is their favorite question they will ask all the muscles between which gap these nerves passes so you have to explain all these cores branches and you have to give importance about the applied aspect you can make this diagram which is shown on the screen you have to make whole of the chart of this branches and you have also to show the diagram the cutaneous distribution of these nerves thank you